Hi everyone, in this tutorial, we're going to look at three ways to create a color palette from an image in Affinity. I'll show you the three options in order of my least to most favorite and share the pros and cons of each method as we go through. Are you ready? Let's get started. If you don't already have it open, you'll need the swatches panel for this tutorial. Now it's a default panel in both the vector and layout studios, but you can add it to any other existing studio as well as those you create yourself. You can find it by going up to the Windows menu and down to General, you'll find it right there. Or you can go to the caret on any other panel, choose Panels, and then search for it. I have mine set up as a default in my custom studio, and I've enlarged the swatches themselves by going to the caret on the panel, down to Appearance, and choosing Large. And for the purposes of the tutorial, I've undocked it so you can more easily see it, but you can also dock it just like any other panel. All three options involve using an image that you either pull in from the stock studio or externally. I've pulled this one in from Unsplash and I've linked it below. To pull a palette from an open document like this one, click the carrot on the swatches palette and choose create palette from document. It's going to give you three options to choose from. Application palette, which creates a palette that's accessible from any document. Document palette, which is going to create a swatch palette specific to the document you're in or system palette, which is specific to Mac users. This saves the palette to your system and it can be used in any app on your Mac. I'm going to choose application palette just in case I want to use it for future documents. Now, almost immediately, it's going to create a palette from the document that you have in place. The name of the palette is going to be whatever your document is named, but you can change it by going to the caret at the top and choosing rename palette. Now, this is where I'll point out why I don't tend to use this method. While it is the quickest of the three, you can see that it's pulled in about 20 different shades of white in addition to the handful of other colors because of the image itself. Now I can go through and delete these, but there's no way to bulk delete colors from a palette. So I'd have to do it one by one and that's going to take time. I could have isolated the colored part of the image using the object selection tool and deleted most of that white, but that's not always an option with every image. And even in this case, it would still give it information that would result in a lot of like colors. So let's take a look at option two. I'm going to go ahead up to the top here and delete this palette. For this next option, you're going to be pulling in a saved image. Now, again, I've pulled this from Unsplash, so I do have this saved to my system. But if there's an image from the stock panel that you wish to use, you're going to need to first save it externally so that you can pull it back through the dialog box. If you're connected to the internet, you can simply double click on any image in the stock panel and it's going to take you to the original image on either Pexels or Pixabay where you can download it, or you can pull it into your canvas and then use any export option to save it to an external file. Once you've saved your image somewhere accessible, go back to the caret under the swatches palette and this time choose create palette from image. Once the dialog box comes up, choose select image, find the image you saved and click open. Next, select the number of colors that you want in the palette. The default is five, and the first palette's going to auto-generate once the image is pulled in. You can choose anywhere from three to 256 colors, and then click preview to see what it's pulled up. In the drop-down box here, again, you're going to be asked what kind of palette you want to create, document, application, or system if you're on a Mac. You also have an additional option of choosing to add it to a palette you currently have open. In my opinion, this is a bit better option than the first one because you have a little bit more control over the palette, but not much. At five colors, it's not really picking up anything but the most neutral colors, and there's no way of directing the picker where to focus, so you can't change that. But if I increase the number of colors, I'm going to run into the same issue as the first one. So let me change this to 20, and I'll click Preview. You can see that I'm getting some more of the actual colors and not just the neutrals, but I'm running into the same issue that I did with that first one and that I have a lot of variations of white and off-white. So while this is marginally better than the last option, let me show you the final option, which is actually my go-to. Now this last option is very manual, but it also has the most control over which colors are being selected from the image. I'm going to create my own palette by going back up to the dropdown and this time I'm going to choose document palette because it's going to allow me to create the palette much more quickly. So I'll go ahead and name this. Now, if I hadn't set one up myself, the first time I sample a color the way that I'm going to show you, Affinity would automatically create a document palette for me. So I'm going to select my color picker either by going to the toolbar here or choosing I on my keyboard. And I wanna go up to the contextual menu at the top here. 
I want to specifically look at radius. Point one by one is going to sample whatever is directly under the cursor. And since I have magnification on, it's going to specifically sample whatever is under that tiny little box in the middle. The other options are going to be an average of the color from squares of different sizes up to 257. I usually stick with point, but if you're not getting the selections that you're hoping for, you can try other radius selections as well. Now, the reason that I chose a document palette in this case is because if I hold command or control down on my keyboard, while I click, it's automatically going to add it to my palette. Normally, if I were going to select something, it doesn't automatically add it. I would actually need to select one of these options, either a regular swatch or a global swatch. So I would click it and it would add it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. But what I wanna do instead is hold down Command or Control, and as I click around, it's automatically adding it to my palette. Now, sometimes I find it easier to zoom into my canvas and select colors because I'm doing a point sample. Otherwise, it's a little bit more difficult to pinpoint the exact spot, especially when you're working with a mouse or a trackpad in your finger. Now, if I had opted to create an application wide palette, of course, I can still sample colors, but again, I would simply sample them and then choose one of these options to add the color to my palette. If I want to use this document palette as an application wide palette, I can always go up to the top here and choose export palette and then import it in as an application palette. If you have any questions about the three options that we covered in this tutorial, let me know below. If there's a particular affinity tool that you'd like to learn more about, let me know that as well. I have many more tutorials in the works, so be sure to subscribe so you always know when a new one is published. But in the meantime, if you've missed any other lessons in the series, you can find them here in the full playlist. Thanks for watching.